Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Brumble Gaming, the home of the gaming, and if I'm being completely honest, story mode was probably the thing that surprised me the most out of all the new stuff that was added to Super Mario Maker 2. Not only was I not expecting anything resembling a story mode to show up in this game, but I also didn't think that the levels in this mode would be as well-designed and creative as they ended up being. And to top it all off, I really, really didn't expect there to be anything truly difficult or frustrating in this mode. But man, was I wrong. Apparently, Nintendo decided that it was a good idea to throw in some gut-wrenchingly difficult levels into the story mode as well. Courses, which are easily some of the most rage-inducing ones in any 2D Mario game. So, to show you guys just how cruel these levels can get, today I'll be ranking what I find to be the top 10 hardest levels in the story mode for Super Mario Maker 2. Mind you, just like all the other top 10s I do on my channel, this list is entirely based around my opinion of what makes levels difficult and what makes levels not difficult. So if you end up disagreeing with my list, just keep that in mind. Anyways, without any further ado, let's begin. At number 10, Airship Flight is an incredibly tedious course where the player is required to use the Super Feather to fall through an entire vertical level without touching the ground. On paper, it sounds pretty easy, but Nintendo made sure to make that task extremely frustrating and nerve-wracking to do. The camera extends only a certain amount downwards in this level, so there will be many times where you have to use quick reflexes to avoid taking damage or landing on the ground. And it's not as simple as just falling downward, oh no. Airship Flight will also force you to climb up vines in super tight spaces to get over hills in some sections, and in other sections bounce on wigglers to gain heights so that you can eventually continue falling even more. Needless to say, these parts are pretty frustrating and can trip you up many many times. Oh, and since this is a clear condition based level, there are absolutely no checkpoints here. None. Nada. So if you touch the ground, guess what? You'll have to redo the entire level all over again. Isn't that fun? So to compensate for this, you'd think that the level would be relatively short, right? No, oh, absolutely not. Airship Flight is extremely lengthy for a clear condition based level, as the player is forced to fall down double the length of this level's vertical span. In other words, once you hit the bottom of the level for the first time, you have to ride the twisters all the way back up and fall down through another section as long as the first one while still not being able to touch the ground. Above all else, you're going to be needing a lot of patience and perseverance while playing Airship Flight if you want to be able to get to the end and take this one down. In addition to all the things that I didn't anticipate with this story mode, I also really did not expect Nintendo to put a speedrun level in it. Needless to say, they did it anyways, and gosh dang, it's pretty precise, especially by Nintendo's standards. The platforming challenges in this 30 second speedrun can require a lot of precise jumps to overcome, especially during the latter half of this level where the jumps become more complicated and varied. With how this level is set up as a whole, it's guaranteed that you'll only be left with a few seconds remaining on the timer when you reach the goal, usually only 3 or less. Granted, that is a pretty generous timer when compared to most speedrun levels in Course World, so I can understand how Mario Maker veterans would find the story mode level as fairly easy. But the people who aren't as experienced with tight speedrun levels are definitely going to struggle with dash on, dash off a fair amount before they can finally beat the timer and finish the course. And that's the main reason why this course is relatively one of the hardest in this game's story mode. Summer Shootout presents the player with an auto scrolling challenge entirely based around bouncing on cannonballs in the sky. The twist is, however, you'll be jumping off these bullets for over half of the level, making for a considerably challenging level that requires some pretty fast reflexes and careful platforming. The patterns at which these bullets appear on screen will constantly change as the player progresses, with harder and harder patterns appearing as the level goes on. Luckily, you are given a Goomba shoe for this level, which does slightly increase your radius for jumping on the bullets. But if you happen to lose the shoe at any point, then you're going to be in a world of hurt, for these bolts are specifically laid out so that jumping off them as normal Mario is much more difficult to accomplish, especially if you aren't used to the gimmick yet. This course's challenges are so different and unique from all the other levels in this story mode, and that's partially what makes this course so challenging. While it may be relatively short, Summer Shootout's odd mechanic and annoying platforming definitely make it a very difficult level, one that'll probably take a lot of trial and error to complete.
I think we can all agree that some of the most aggravating levels in 2D Mario games are the ones which take place underwater, and Sea of Sorrow, number 7 on this list, is certainly no exception to this trend. In fact, it proves to be much harder than most underwater levels from the other games, as its gigantic structure and confusing puzzles make it quite the monster to beat. The timer is your biggest enemy here, as it'll take you a good couple of minutes to figure out what you're even supposed to do while playing this course. Additionally, Seer Sauer's flow of challenges and puzzles isn't consistent at all, which makes it all the more harder to understand and beat. The course starts by putting the player up against a room where they have to stomp on a circle of booze to obtain the key and proceed, which may lead the player to believe that the rest of this level is going to be based around that gimmick. But from there on out, you're required to swim through an extremely expansive and confusing maze, which continuously changes the puzzles so that you're never sure what to do next. This level isn't overly challenging, per se, you probably won't be dying over and over to the enemies and obstacles here. However, the tediousness and confusing layout of the Sea of Sorrow are what truly make this level one of the hardest to get through. Trust me, when you play this course yourself, you'll be wishing that it was over when you're only halfway through. Next up on our list, Secret of the Dry Bones Shell is only such a difficult level purely because of how hard it is to understand and to figure out how to complete, as this course is much more of a mind-bending puzzle gauntlet than a traditional platforming one. After putting you up against a quick lava section in which you have to platform off of booze and grinders, this level then drops you right into a room with three key coins placed in extremely odd places, which, surprise surprise, you'll need to get to proceed. It took me a good couple of minutes to actually figure out how to get these three coins during my first run through of the course. And to get these three key coins, you'll need to figure out mechanics of the dry bones shell that you probably didn't even know existed before playing this level, such as being able to ground pound with the dry bone shell attached. Did you know that you could do that in the Super Mario Bros. style? Well, now you do, and this level will be much easier for you as a result of that. You're welcome! The secret of the Dry Bones Shell course isn't entirely based around this one room, though, as once you get all three key coins, you'll have to then make it through some timing-based challenges that'll take a good amount of time to complete, as some are surprisingly precise or confusing. And let's not forget the fact that the secret of the Dry Bones Shell is a very lengthy level, possibly one of the longest that you'll encounter in this campaign. You seriously better make sure that you're experienced with the Dry Bones Shell and puzzle solving if you want to be able to complete this one without too much of a hassle. What's ironic about the March of the Rookie Toads is that the story mode lists this course as 2 stars out of 4 regarding difficulty, which is just complete blasphemy. This level is easily one of the stupidest, dumbest, and most frustrating level out of all the ones in the story mode, period. In this course, you have to escort all 10 of these freaking toads all the way to the end of the level to win. The problem is, these toads will mimic Mario's exact movement, but each with a little delay. Meaning if Mario has all 10 toads following him and he jumps, it'll take the last toad 3 full seconds to catch up to that spot and copy Mario's jumps. I cannot express how excruciatingly annoying this is. As if you just decide to jump over a Goomba instead of killing it, half of these dumb toads following you will end up dying to that same Goomba. And guess what happens when these toads die? They enclose themselves in their own personal bubble and float off to the left side of the screen, completely ignoring all collision with blocks. Then you'll need to go chase them down, usually all the way back to the start of the level, and grab them again so that you can actually finish the level again. Doesn't that just sound super fun? <laughs> If you lose any of your toads at all during this level, it's a constant struggle to get them back, and it's very likely that you'll lose even more toads in the process of trying to rescue the ones in the bubbles. The worst part about this level is that on top of there being a good amount of enemies on the ground, there's a giant piranha plant riding a cloud on the top of the screen which you can't kill. Throughout this course, it'll constantly be shooting fireballs down at Mario, which can easily kill the few toads at the back of the toad line, forcing you to lose progress to go back and pop their stupid little bubbles. Or, if you're unlucky like me, this piranha piece of crap will kill your last toad literally frames before you reach the flagpole, and everything will just go downhill from there. In conclusion, this level is just incredibly aggravating, dumb, and idiotic. And unless you're ridiculously careful while playing it, you're going to have a very hard time completing it. Here at number 4, Stone of Destiny is actually a lot like the secret of the Dry Bones Shell, number 6 on this list. Despite their similarities though, the Stone of Destiny ends up being a considerable amount harder due to the absence of checkpoints in its lengthy structure. 
Plus, all the challenges here are entirely based around the stone, a clear condition item that heavily limits Mario's movement and jumping whenever he's carrying one. In the Stone of Destiny, the player is required to complete four one-screen challenges in a row to acquire four keys used to get to the finish. All these challenges are very hard, especially since, like I said earlier, they're all based around the stone gimmick and won't be possible unless you have the stone with you. Every challenge is unique in its own way as well, as some are focused on platforming while others are more puzzle based. The one screen challenge that takes the cake as the hardest is easily the fourth one though, as you're required to throw the stone block into the claw and quickly jump onto it to ride it across the pit of grinders to obtain the key. And it's a lot more difficult than it sounds if the claw will just constantly sway from left to right while on the track, making for some jumps that are easily missable. That's just one of the four challenges you need to complete, mind you. And let me re-emphasize that there are no checkpoints here whatsoever. So if you get three keys, but die while trying to get the fourth, you'll have to restart without any keys and be forced to do all of the four challenges all over again. That right there is a huge punch to the stomach, and a huge factor as to why this course is easily one of the hardest in the story mode, in my opinion. Yep, that's right guys, since Nintendo realized that over half of Super Mario Maker 2's players were just going to recreate the original Super Mario Bros. 1-1, they decided that they should make their own recreation in their story mode as well. You gotta get on that bandwagon while it's moving. But it wasn't enough for Nintendo to just recreate the whole level and call it good. Oh no, they had to go higher, they had to go further, they had to make it unique. And so do you know what they did? They made a poorly designed borderline troll version of 1-1. Yes! This is everything I wanted in life, Nintendo! No, I'm really not exaggerating for the record. Enemies have just been littered all over this course, some of which are clearly meant to unexpectedly pop up and kill you, making it feel like the whole level was redesigned to just screw the player over. One second it'll just be like the original 1-1, and then suddenly, on the next screen you'll unexpectedly be required to make a near pixel perfect jump to proceed. This happens more than once in this recreation, and it's really dumb when it does, because there's no indication that the jumps need to be incredibly precise. And I know I mentioned this before, but I'm going to re-emphasize that enemies are literally just placed everywhere in this level, so that there's almost no breathing room for the player. Oh, and you know that sub-area in the original 1-1? In this recreation, instead of helping you, it actually sends you backwards in the level. That's right, if you're smart enough to try and go down the pipe to try and take a shortcut, Nintendo says, nope, screw you kid, you just got sent backwards. <laughs> And let's not forget to mention the surprise muncher in the exit pipe of the sub area that can easily kill you. Cool, right? Remember when Nintendo said over and over again that you should treat the player fairly? What in the world happened here to that principle, Nintendo? Because with all the unexpected traps and extremely annoying platforming, you sure as heck don't treat the player fairly in this recreation of 1-1. And that alone makes it an extremely unenjoyable and incredibly frustrating course to complete. Oh boy, I have a lot to say about this one too. Let's start off with this. You know what Mario is supposed to do above anything else? He's supposed to be able to jump. In fact, jumping is such a staple move for Mario that it feels so unnatural when he can't. I mean, his old name was Jumpman, for crying out loud. So of course Nintendo, with their big brains over at the Nintendo headquarters, were just like, <laughs> you know it'd be funny? If we made like a level in Mario Maker, but like Mario can't jump and we make it really long and have no checkpoints. <laughs> yeah, bro, we should totally do that. <laughs> and so that's what they did. They decided that it was a fantastic idea to make a whole level in Super Mario Maker 2 story mode where you can't jump at all. Not even once. Oh wait, I'm sorry, did I say that you can't jump in this level? Let me rephrase that, you can't even leave the ground whatsoever, meaning if you simply fall in the air for the shortest distance, it'll count as failing the clear condition and you'll be required to restart the level from the beginning. And with that in mind, Sail of the Skies is designed so that falling very short distances is ridiculously easy and mindless to do. I mean, do you realize how hard that makes this level? Not being able to jump in general would be hard enough, but having to perform this in a level specifically designed so that's easy to accidentally fall or jump is stepping it up another couple of notches. Once you die enough times in this level, your tendency will be to try and rush through it so that you don't have to bear its stupidity any longer. 
but trying to rush through this level only increases the chances of failure. So when you restart for the 12th time, you'll be forced to slowly wait on these blue platforms, and slowly wait on these moving platforms, then carefully and slowly tread on these seesaws. <sighs> In case it isn't obvious, I despise this level. It's like playing a modern Sonic game without being able to boost or homing attack. And on top of being tedious and unenjoyable, it is extremely hard to complete, especially for more casual players, due to its length, its design of its challenges, and its unforgiving nature. Don't play this level unless you enjoy these types of sadistic challenges. Oh, and do you know how many of these no-jump levels Nintendo put into Super Mario Maker 2 Story Mode? Not one. Not two. Not even three. No, they decided to put four of them in. That's right, four. Count them. Four no-jump levels. And Chain Chomp Chiller, the no-jump level that Undo Dog tasks you with, is easily the hardest of them all, and in my opinion, the hardest level, period, in Super Mario Maker Story Mode. While the previous no-jump level didn't have any enemies, this one does, and in my opinion, that makes it a considerable amount harder. Specifically, this whole course is littered with chain chomps and forces you to dodge all of them without jumping at all, a task that is way more difficult than you might think. The chain chomps barely jump high enough to give you a small window which you can run under them, but if you aren't incredibly precise with that timing, then you're dead, as this level provides you with no power-ups on top of no checkpoints. This gets very challenging when the level starts throwing hills and snake blocks into the mix, as purely running straight forward as soon as the level starts won't work to dodge these chain chomps. Trust me, I tried. Multiple times. Due to the way that these chain chomps act, avoiding them without jumping in without power ups in this level is very, very difficult to do, especially by Nintendo standards, and even more difficult than the last level on this list, in my opinion. There will almost certainly be many, many deaths before you can finally take this one down and call it a day. And hey, at least once you do finish this level and beat the campaign, then you can listen to Undo Dog's jokes for 100 coins! Cause that compensates for the pain that you went through to beat this level, right? Well guys, there you go, those were what I thought were the 10 hardest levels in Super Mario Maker Story Mode. This video took a lot of time to make, so I hope it was worth the wait. If you enjoyed it, then please consider showing your support by leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. And hey, while you're here, why not poke around and check out some other videos on my channel? Or if you wanted to, you could watch the ones linked on screen right now. Anyways, with all that said, Bramble Gaming, over and out.